So this is the Matthews Garden at the University of Kentucky. Uh, this garden was originally planned in 1900 by one of the first deans of the agriculture school, Dr. William Matthews. In the 1990s, Dr. James Krupa asked if he could take over the garden and return it to a kind of native state. My whole goal is to maintain it as a diverse woodland garden for educational purposes and just as an oasis to get away from the noise of the campus. He trucked out 22 loads of, uh, of honeysuckle, tore out all of the invasive species, and he came in here and he planted 1,700 native species. And then sunk almost $20,000 into planting new stuff in there. Hundreds of plants, a lot of them didn't make it, but since then I've been in charge of it, and my goal is to have it as species rich as possible. This is a a uh, very characteristic Kentucky tree called the pawpaw. If you look up here, you can see it's just getting ready to flower. The fruit of the pawpaw tree tastes almost like a banana. Uh, you can make really good banana bread with it. Um, people either love it or they hate it. Here blooming beneath the pawpaws are Virginia bluebells. This is a, a very spectacular, characteristic um, native Kentucky wildflower. So you can look around today uh, and you can see all kinds of species that are native to the bluegrass region of Kentucky uh, blooming and this is one of the most biologically diverse regions of the United States because it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's not too wet, it's not too dry, you know it's in that kind of Goldilocks just right phase of, of, a, of an ecosystem. A garden with that level of biodiversity you just, you just don't find. We have the arboretum over there but you know even in that case it's not as biodiverse and it's very separated. Uh, educationally, where can you go with a, a plant class or a biology class and see 300, possibly 400 species of plants? So it is all right there. One doesn't have to wander all over the state to look at this vegetation. It is there and that makes it really very special. So one of the interesting things about the Matthews Garden is that even though it is the most biologically diverse half acre of land in the state of Kentucky, it's not where you think you would find it. It's right here in the middle of an incredibly urban part of Lexington. We're right here on the corner of Washington Street and Limestone. The hospital's right up the road so you constantly hear uh, ambulances coming and going, you hear sirens, and so it's in some ways a very peaceful place, a very pastoral place, but on another level you're always reminded that you're, you're in an urban setting. So the big issue right now is that the law school has been given $23 million to build a new building by the, the, the state of Kentucky. Uh, and here's the law school here, and they want to move directly over here on top of the Matthews Garden. The garden is literally an endangered species. It could be bulldozed any month, any week, really. My argument personally is that you know, any architect worth his or her salt would love the challenge of trying to incorporate this garden into the architectural design. Uh, there's no reason the law school could not move backwards into the parking lot here, take down this, this mining building, and preserve not only the Matthews Garden, but the Matthews House, which is itself a historic building because it's uh, 108 years old. Well, I'm still trying to comprehend how we we could actually think it's a good idea to like progress in one department but you're taking away from many others from horticulture from environment sustainability it's like like Krupa said it's literally a living textbook and we're taking that from one department in order to advance in another well I mean the main threat right now is extending the law school into the houses in the building that's the immediate threat um, the other threat, if we can stop this from happening, the other threat is what happens once I retire. I mean, it could just degenerate and what I hope, so that will cause it to be eliminated. So what I hope 
if we can save it at this stage to talk to the people at the Arboretum and somehow have the University and the Arboretum work out something where they will then be in charge of it. And it, it keeps me up at night, and it has since 2000 when I took over. What's going to happen to it when I'm gone? And I personally think creative writing should take it over, and this should be just like a beautiful oasis for creative writers. To me, there is nothing that matches this, and I don't think you could find a more biologically diverse half acre in any urban setting, or probably anywhere in the state. So that makes it uh, tragic if it goes. There are the three main points. To lose the garden means we lose the history. And Ruth Matthews and Dr. Matthews are part of the history. She is an icon as far as education in Lexington. So we lose the history. We lose the biodiversity. We lose the educational facility. And, and all this talk about living learning centers on campus, you can't get a more living learning center than this place. It would, to my mind, be a real tragedy if, if we lost this, this, um, th this, this place. If you or anyone you know would like to help save the Matthews Garden from being destroyed, it's not too late. All you have to do is log on to the website change.org. In the search bar, type in Matthews Garden and click the first link. Simply fill out some basic information about yourself and click sign. Only together can we make a difference.